Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to the beautiful Pixel Core Studios in downtown Petaluma, California. And today I have with me Mark Spencer, and we're going to continue our discussion on Motion 5 and what you can do with it as it relates to Final Cut Pro 10 users. I'm very excited about what you have to show us today. Great. So am I. Yeah. <laughs> um, this whole motion thing has me very jazzed. It's what they've done with it is very interesting. So last time we just talked a little bit about getting motion up and running, a little bit about the interface, and we kind of left off here with creating a title. And just if you if you missed last episode, the whole idea is that in Final Cut Pro we have these browsers for transitions, titles, and effects, and these are all motion projects. And the idea is that you publish a motion project to Final Cut Pro. And then it just shows so, up in those one of those browsers. Yeah, so, and then anyone can use it in Final Cut that they're, they're uh, creating something. Exactly. They can add titles, transitions, effects Excellent. to their to their to their projects. Now, so what I want to talk about is this process of publishing a motion project or a motion template. They kind of use that terminology interdependently. Interdependently. In, no, interchangeably. Interchangeably, yeah. Yes. Thank you. That's, uh, <laughs> starting to lose it here. So here's the deal. Um, we're here if and in fact, let me just show you something. I have a motion project open right now. If I go to the file menu and choose new. You get that little... Well, not only that, what happened to the project? Oh, you can only open one project at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something... That's different than Motion 3 and 4. One project at a time. One project at a time. So, one project at a time. But I wanted to show you the project browsers in case you didn't see that before. When you you create a new project or launch Motion, you get this dialog. I'm going to create a Final Cut title. So, this is a project specific to a title. Say open. In fact, when I do so, um, uh, we get the whole interface. The timeline's open by default. And there's some contents in it already. Yeah, okay. I see that. Yeah, because this is a title, uh, Motion assumes that I'm probably going to want some text, right? So, right? so it gives me some text to work with. And it also creates this thing that we can see the name in the layers list. This is called the layers list now, is title background. It looks like a drop zone to me. It does. It's actually called a placeholder. I see. But it really functions like a drop zone. And there's two purposes for it. One is that here in Motion, we could throw some content in there in order to design in some context. So I could dr- grab a picture and throw it in there. I'm not gonna do that right now. Sure. The other purpose uh, is that in Final Cut Pro, when you take this motion project and put it on top of the video clip, the video clip will fill that placeholder. Oh, I see. Okay, so, so you that's, get, get a sense in Final Cut for preview purposes. Well, it's just, it means if that weren't there, you wouldn't you wouldn't see the video. So the, the video, any, anything you do to that placeholder clip, like you might wanna add an effect to it. Like a blur. In motion, like a blur like a blur or a color correction or crop it or whatever, anything you do will affect the video in Final Cut Pro. Excellent. So that's what it's there for, is uh, for those two purposes. Now, I'm just gonna design an extremely simple title to show the whole concept of publishing, okay? So we already have some text, we can just leave that there. I'm gonna turn off this title background for a minute because it's a little bit distracting for what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go to the library and I just want a little background for my uh, my text here, okay? So I'm gonna go down to this replicators category and you know me and I'm, I'm a huge replicator fan. And within here, we've got some lower thirds. And oh, we've got all kind of good stuff in here. There's one called lower thirds and but that's not bad. From here, it looks like it says lounge lizard. Uh, that's lounge, no, yeah, no, it's low, <laughs> lower lounge. Oh, lower, lower lounge. lounge, sorry. And here's one called sonic. I think I like that a little okay. better, okay. sonic, okay? So I'm just gonna click apply to uh, bring that into the layers list. And then I'm just gonna hit command left bracket. Everything's the same in motion in terms of all your keyboard shortcuts. So that was like a Photoshop command. Yes. Move move the layer down. Same as Photoshop, same as After Effects even. Right. So I've got this in here now and I'm just gonna drag it uh, below my text. Okay. And then it's a little hard to see the text. So I'll select the text and I'll use the heads up display or the HUD just to make that text black so we can see it a little better there Mm -hmm. on that. Okay. And if I play the project, uh, I've got this little sort of slowly in back, any background, little okay? Moving, little moving rectangles. Little moving rectangles, yeah. Give it a little more, set it off from the video and make it look kind of nice. Now, um, nothing animates on at the beginning, it's just there. So I'm gonna select the group that these layers are contained in and I'm gonna go back to the library to behaviors and go to basic motion behaviors. There's something called a fade in, fade out, beha- fade in, fade out behavior. And it tells you exactly what it's gonna do here. It's gonna make a dissolve. Okay, so I'm going to drag it onto the group, and now we start out on an empty screen. Or black screen. A black screen, and it fades in, and then it'll play, and at the end it'll fade out. 
Okay. Sure. So there, there, there's my super simple title. Okay. So here's the cool thing about this. Um, if I hit Command S or go into the, the file menu and choose Save, um, what's going to happen is I'm going to get this dialog. Okay. So this is where things are a little. What if? And this only happens if you chose one of those Final Cut projects. Titles, transitions, effects. And generators. Perfect. Yes. Got it. Yes. Got it. Yeah. A regular motion project, which was the fifth option, uh -huh. you save normally, just wherever you want to put it. But because this is one of those final cut, you'll get things, this unique dialogue, yes. which you wouldn't normally get. Yes. So it wants us to give it a name. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call this I'll call this simple Sonic because we had that Sonic simple sure. Sonic, and then simple um, Sonic Simon. You have to give it a category. Okay, so right. we've named the So it knows where to put it inside Final Cut. Yes. And you know where to look for it. Yes. Got it. So let's just let's just call this uh, Mac Break. Okay, for our category. Okay. And let's like, like lower third, lower thirds, our Mac break, lower thirds category. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll hit create. And then from there, we have the option of adding it uh, to a theme. So you can create a theme, but you don't have to. It's optional. Right. So I'm going to leave that off. I don't need any unused media, and I really would prefer this was unchecked by default here. And then we can also choose to save a preview movie. So if I click that as well and well, choose. Wait, yeah. before you click save. Publish. Where is it saving all of this stuff? Like, where is it saving this particular like uh, title file? Great question. So um, I'll show you in just a second. But it's going to our into our uh, movies movies folder right. into uh, motion templates, and it's storing it right there. Well, the reason I'm asking is because you didn't include unused media. I'm assuming if you did check that and there was some video and some stuff that you imported, like Photoshop, that all ends up in this place that it you that, that you've yet to show yeah, us. It all, it all goes okay. right. So. Um, I'm just going to hit publish here. I know I left that uh, title background turned off, but that, that'll be okay because we didn't really make any changes to it. And because we chose to create the preview movie, it's going to go ahead and generate a preview movie for us to look at in Final Cut Pro. Excellent. So there's going to go through and generate that preview movie. Now I want you to notice something while it's doing that. Look at the name at the top of the whole project window. It says .moti. .moti, motion title project. So we have these different extensions for different types of motion. So, like, projects. what would it be a generator? Gen I, Gen uh, I. Well, right. it's so it's M O E F for a motion effect, uh -huh. M O T R for a motion transition, and a generator is actually just a standard motion project okay. that okay. is published to Final Cut. Um, the other thing to notice is this is one big interface window now. And in, in earlier versions of Motion, you had two separate pieces, and now it is just one. Big oh yeah, that's right. They had the uti the pane. utility pane and then, the, exactly. and then the viewer. Exactly. And this is just one. There's no utility pane anymore. No, it's all it's all integrated. Um, what I do like is how the timeline is open by default here, right. and it makes it much easier to sort of get to things and work with things in here. So the interface is quite easy to work with. And I'm actually just going to cancel that uh, preview just so we can keep moving on here. I'm going to go to Final Cut, and now if we go to our Titles browser, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in addition to the categories that we already had in here, look. Oh, Mac Break Lower Thirds. Mac Break Lower Thirds. There's our category. We created here. the category yep. in motion that automatically shows up in yep. the browser of Final Cut Pro 10. And if we mouse over it, oh, look um, at that. Yeah, it, even though it didn't finish the whole preview, it did enough of it that we can mouse over it and we can see exactly so what it's So, what was like. taking long on that render process is that movie, the preview movie, was it's being, being generated. Yes, right. right. So, then if I, if I in my uh, project here, if I just go to the head of a clip and double click this, uh, title, it gets added to my project, and there we can see it in the project. Wow. Okay. And from there, even though I haven't done, I've just published the project, I've got a variety of different things I can do to it, which we don't really have time to go into here, but if we go to this text tab, we have all kinds of things where I can modify the font and the size and the alignment and the color and add a drop shadow and, you know, customize, really go to town it. And customize right. it in a lot of different ways to make it work. And that's the basics of it. It goes much deeper than that, but that's the basics of publishing. I have a question before we uh, end, end the session. And you could you share that uh, lower third with someone else on another computer, another Final Yes, Cut yes, absolutely. So let's just look at that. If you go to the Finder and you go to your Movies folder, you'll have a Motion Templates folder. In that Motion Templates folder, within Titles, you can see there's our new category, sure. Mac Break Lower Thirds, and there is our particular lower third, Simple Sonic, that's the name of it. And there's the actual project file, the preview movie, little preview wow. thumbnails. That's slick. It's all right yeah. there. Yeah, you just so move that over into that folder and you're exactly. done. Exactly. Move that and you're and it's set up for somebody that's else to use. Fantastic. It's just done and ready to go. Excellent. And that's the that's the basics. So you get that and then it just it gets better and better from there on out. Excellent.
So what we've just, uh, Mark has shown us, is how to use Motion 5 as a motion graphics development tool. You can create uh, amazing eye candy for use for any Final Cut Pro 10 user. Um, thanks for coming in and showing us, showing us this. Um, you have a you have some products, uh, training products on how to you know, use Motion 5? As if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, rippletraining.com. I have um, the, uh, Motion 5 fast forward for if you've, you've never used motion before and you just want to get started we'll take you through everything just to get up to speed mm -hmm. and then i have rigging and publishing in motion which is more for people who already know more gary heady well you, you already you're up to speed on motion three and four it's just i just want to go into really how to do the publishing and rigging excellent. and that will take you through that whole thing excellent well uh you heard it from uh, motion master mark uh, my name's steve martin and we appreciate you watching mac break studio see you next time